everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. And today we are reviewing this Boulder Globetrotter. So I was actually really excited to hear from Boulder. Um, they reached out to me and loaned this watch in for the purposes of this review. Boulder's a watch company that I've had my eyes on for a little bit. Uh, the first watch of theirs that really caught my eye was their field watch, the Boulder Expedition. Uh, this is, of course, a, a GMT kind of slash diver. I was really curious to see how this watch would hold up and, and just kind of the general quality uh, that Boulder is providing. So let us get right into it. So you can see from the case here, uh, a big slab of 316L stainless steel. It's got a brushed finish all the way around. It also has these really wide, uh, flat angled lugs that come down. And the lugs are a little bit short as well. Um, this watch is one of the most like tool aesthetic watches uh, that I've ever seen on a watch in person. This watch is, uh, is definitely not trying to hide uh, what it is and, and what it is supposed to be for, which we'll talk about when we get into the review. You see here a screw down crown uh, at four o'clock. This is kind of uh, this crown is sort of like a Boulder trademark. It's a similar crown that you find in their Expedition. It does have a embossed uh, Boulder logo that you see there on the side. You also get a screw down case back with this stamped uh, Globe Trotter logo that they have, which is pretty nifty as well. You see here too this flat sapphire crystal that goes across the watch. It does have anti reflective coating on it, of course. And this watch is rated for 300 meters of water resistance. If we look at the dimensions, uh, we have a case width here of about 44 millimeters, uh, a lug to lug length of 50 millimeters, a height of 14 and a half millimeters, and it has a strap width of 22 millimeters. So moving into the bezel here, um, you do see this uh, 60 click bi-directional GMT bezel here. This is a ceramic bezel. It does have the two-tone finish. This is of course the, the blue black or the Batman variant of this watch. Uh, you can also get it in a Pepsi variant as well. When I do the loom shot later, you'll see that all the markers and numerals on the bezel do have Super Luminova in them. Now, if we do step down from the bezel, take a look at how deep and how, how pronounced that chapter ring is uh, that's on the outer part of the dial here. And you can see that the steel chapter ring does have another 24-hour scale on it. So because you have two 24-hour scales on this watch with the one GMT hand, this watch is very useful uh, if you have to track three different time zones as opposed to just two different time zones. Of course, the dial is going to be a matte black dial here. You have the Boulder uh, logo and branding up at the top and then the Globetrotter uh, branding and the depth rating down there below. Of course, at the four o'clock position, you do see that cutout for the date window. You see these steel framed uh, rectangular hour markers that run around the outside of the dial with a uh, double marker at 12 o'clock to help with orientation. You also do have a open minute track that runs along the outside of the dial. Now the handset I really enjoy, um, you do have these steel framed blade style hands for the hour and minute. Uh, you have this like rectangular lollipop seconds hand framed in orange. Again, that's also kind of a bolder signature, as well as this dark blue uh, GMT hand that rolls around. But because you have such a stark contrast in the way the different hands are laid out, it makes the watch extremely legible at a quick glance. And of course, the markers, the hands, and as I mentioned, the bezel, all are filled uh, with BGW9 Super Luminova, and I will say a pretty impressive amount of BGW9 Super Luminova, uh, which you guys will be able to see from the picture that I'm putting up here now. The Boulder Globetrotter is powered with an ETA 2893-2 uh, GMT movement. That is an elaborate grade uh, GMT movement, kind of the second grade of the four that they have. Uh, it does feature hacking, hand winding, a quick set date, and an independently adjustable GMT hand, of course. And as you can see, it does beat at 20,800 vibrations per hour, uh, giving that second hand a pretty smooth sweep. Now, the movement's rated for between minus 20 and plus 20 seconds per day, and the performance that I found on this example of the Boulder Globetrotter certainly does fall within that range. Now, as far as the strap that comes with this watch, it does come with a custom-molded uh, rubber strap that has this Boulder logo up here. Uh, it sits flush against the case side. I, I really love it when watch companies do make rubber straps or leather straps that do sit flush with the case. It just gives the entire watch a little bit more of a sleeker aesthetic. And then if we flip over here, um, it does come with this steel deployment clasp. It's brushed finished just like the rest of the watch is. Uh, if we open it up, you can see here it does have a fully milled clasp in there as well. And it also has one of my other favorite features, uh, the ratcheting diver extension, which you can also use as a de facto uh, micro adjustment as well. Pull it all the way out, and then you can click it back in to get whatever fit uh, that you need to make the watch comfortable. You have a couple more 
sort of micro adjustments here as well. You can set the end of the rubber strap in a little bit deeper uh, if you need to as well, just to get a custom fit. And of course, the class does have a Boulder logo and branding on it as well. And here is what the Boulder Globetrotter looks like on my 8-inch wrist. Now, you'll have to forgive me. Um, as you can see here, the rubber strap is not sized for me. This being a deployment class rubber strap, you do have to cut it down uh, to fit your wrist. And this being a loner from Boulder, I'm not about to do that because <laughs> it's not my watch to do. Uh, though I really wish I could because this so far, this I mean, in wearing it, in this fashion, you know, what little bit I've been able to do. The rubber strap actually does feel really comfortable uh, and hugs the wrist really well because it comes straight down from the case. I've had to wear this watch uh, on a NATO strap while I've had it in my possession so far. And as you can see, too, the proportions of the watch uh, for my 8-inch wrist are really excellent. Again, it is a wide watch. It is a bit of a longer watch. Uh, so, again, if you have a smaller wrist, it might be a little large. It might feel a little large on there. But, again, the strap does help because it is going to reach down and hug your wrist no matter what size wrist that you have. So the thing that first struck me um, when I received this watch and when I opened it up is that it is definitely a watch that is very unapologetic in its design. Um, so, like, there's a lot of GMT watches that try and straddle the line, that try to, you know, hey, be your travel companion, but you can also wear it in the boardroom, you can also wear it with a suit, and, you know, of course, the first GMT that you think of when you think of that is probably going to be the Rolex GMT Master II. Uh, this is definitely not a boardroom GMT by any stretch of the imagination. This is a vacation watch. This is kind of like a go anywhere travel watch. It can go, you know, it can go into the ocean with you again, 300 meters water resistance. Uh, it's rugged as hell. It's going to stand up to a lot of abuse. It just, it just feels solid. It just feels like a really well built watch. I mean, the case here is made out of a single slab of steel. And again, it feels like a slab of steel sitting on your wrist. Uh, it's built to be tough. It's not built to be super sleek as you can see you know with the the way the lugs come down the watch has a lot of hard angles um that's what they're going for and and i really do appreciate that and it's unfortunate because a lot of people are going to lay eyes on this watch and they're going to see the batman bezel and they're going to see the pepsi bezel and they're just going to say oh it's a gmt master wannabe it's anything but that it is, it is definitely not trying to ape that whatsoever it, and again i mentioned that the case is just kind of like this big slab but it's actually it feels well proportioned, right? Like it doesn't feel as wide as 44 millimeters. And that's partly because the bezel, you know, almost extends to the side of the case. It's partly because you have the crown here at four o'clock. Um, it, it, I'm not saying it feels diminutive. It certainly doesn't, um, but it doesn't feel quite as large as some other watches do that are in this, that are in this size category. I think the shortened lugs have a little bit to do with that. And again, you especially see it when you do have the rubber strap on here, the the strap that's fitted for the watch. Um, it definitely felt a little larger on a NATO strap, and you guys will see pictures throughout this review uh, of the watch on a NATO strap because again, that's how I had to wear it when I had it. Uh, but it is gonna it is gonna suit you more if your wrist is a little bit larger. I'd say uh, seven inches or over, you're probably gonna be in pretty good shape. If your wrist is smaller than seven inches, it might feel uh, a little large on you. Now, just from an aesthetic standpoint, my absolute favorite uh, bit of the watch is the dial. Um, it, clearly, a lot of thought was put into it, the way it's laid out, the way it's positioned. And I think it mostly succeeds uh, with one big caveat, and I'll talk about that in a second. A um, couple things that I really like about it. I actually really like how the date window and the crown are both at 4 o'clock, um, and they kind of it's kind of like one straight line that runs across the watch. It just it just makes it look more natural. I'm usually not a big fan of four o'clock date windows, and that's because typically the crown, of course, is gonna be on the right side of the case at three, and it kind of breaks up the looks and, and is a little disjointed. This, again, I feel like there was just a lot of forethought uh, in the design of this watch as Boulder was figuring out what they wanted to do. And like I mentioned too, the crown being tucked away at four here as opposed to being at three o'clock also helps the watch feel a little bit more sleek than it actually is. Now, the chapter ring is probably, like, I, I like and hate the chapter ring at the same time. So, the thing that I like about it is that it is present enough that if you need to track three time zones, it's very legible and easy to see, but it doesn't stand out to the extent that it does kind of just blend in to the rest of the watch when you're not really using it to track a third time zone. So, that part is really nice. But at the same time, I almost wonder if this watch would have been better uh, if they had just omitted that internal chapter ring. The problem is it's just a little 
superfluous because I don't know how many folks are going to truly need to track three time zones at the same time. And eliminating the chapter ring and just having like a more standard like vertical rehot inside of it would have given the dial a little bit more room to breathe. As the dial stands right now, it's very legible, but it also kind of feels a little cramped. Like it feels like there's a lot going on in that small space. And I think having that extra millimeter or millimeter and a half of space, if that chapter ring wasn't there, just kind of spread the dial out and, and give it a little bit more room to breathe. I think that might've been a little bit more visually pleasing to the eye. So the price on the Boulder Globetrotter is $799. Um, as I mentioned, you can get it with a Pepsi bezel or for a hundred bucks more, uh, you can get it with a meteorite dial and a world time bezel. That price point puts it among contemporaries such as the Christopher Ward Trident GMT or the Zelos Horizons in the GMT space. Um, as far as quality goes, I can definitely speak to it being on a similar level to Christopher Ward. Again, it's you can feel the build quality in the watch when you have it in your hands for sure. There's no mistaking that this is a well-built watch that should be able to endure uh, anything that you want to put it through. If you're more of the adventurous type, if you need it to be able to stand up to a little bit more abuse, or if you just really like the, the tool aesthetic of this watch, I think it's certainly a worthy alternative to those contemporaries and well worth checking out as well. So folks, that is it for my review of the Boulder Globetrotter. Special thanks again to Boulder for loaning this watch in. I really enjoyed spending time with it. If you guys found this video entertaining or informative, hit the thumb button down below and feel free to share it on forums or social media if you think somebody else would find this review useful as well. If you loved the video, click the red subscribe button down below and ring the bell icon so you never miss a new episode that I post. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will see you all the next time.